Shiny Pokemon are some of the coolest things you can find in any Pokemon game. From red to blue to green, all shinies come in a very wide variety of colors that makes them really unique. Some colors do look better on shinies though, and if I had to go with what's the best looking color for a shiny, I'd have to go with white. This type of shiny holds some insane looking Pokemon, such as Zygarde, Incineroar, Salazzle, and much much more. With that being said, because white shinies look so good, I'm going to be attempting to beat Pokemon Sun using only white shinies. And as if that isn't tedious enough, I'm also going to be adding on the hard corners lock rules that you see on screen now. At this point, I'm ready to get into the game, so I name myself Zango and start my journey through Alola. The first thing I do after waking up in this completely foreign region is put my drippiest hat on so I can get ready to go out. After successfully walking out of my front door, I get to go talk to Lily, and she actually isn't much of a talker. She tells me to go save her Pokemon, so I do fall off a bridge, you know me. As I'm spiraling towards the rocks, this kind Pokemon saves me and tells me to begin my first shiny hunt, so I do. For this hunt, I'm going to be looking for my starter Litten, and if you know anything about Pokemon Sun, you know that the cutscenes before getting your starter are some of the longest in the game. Because of these cutscenes, I was only getting about 2 encounters per minute, and because the chances of finding a shiny in this game are 1 in every 4096, that means I was supposed to get my shiny starter in about 34 hours. Luckily for me, it didn't take that long to find a shiny, but it still took a while, as in about 20 hours, I found myself a shiny Litten. Oh! I, saw, I, saw, I got it! Oh my gosh! Oh! I got it! Oh, <laughs> I first saw it for a split second. Oh my gosh, I went right past it. Oh my gosh. After getting my Litten, I name him Vulcan, then find out his nature is attack down and defense up, which honestly kind of sucks. Either way, now I'm actually ready to move along with this game, and as I'm doing that, I start to talk to Lily, and you know me, I'm spitting my game, and my mom ends up coming around and ruining the whole thing. Like, what? Why are you selling? Regardless of that, though, I'm now able to go to the trainer school where I can catch my next Pokemon. This Pokemon is a Magnemite that only took me about 9 hours to find, so honestly, pretty happy about that. It's not a white shiny currently, but it does evolve into one, so I'm going to be allowing myself to use it. I name Magnemite Jupiter, then after finishing off all the trainers in the trainer school, leave that place to go to the next city. In the city, I become a professional photographer and take a picture of this palm tree like six times, then I move on to fight Captain Lima. This fight goes really smoothly as I set up work up right in the beginning, so not really much of an issue. There's not really a lot between here and the first trial, so I'm just going to go fight that. This fight with Totem Gumshoes was really long and kind of obnoxious, so I'm not even going to go over it as all you need to know is that I set up a lot of workups in this battle. With that battle finished, I witnessed Kakui absolutely dominate this poor Growlithe with the Breakneck Blitz, and just, just why? I've then got to go help Lily out with Cosmog once again, and seriously Lily, if it just keeps getting away from you, just put it in the bag, or on a leash, or, or something. Once I get Cosmog back to Lily, I'm able to go back to the first town and fight the first Grand Trial. This one's against Hala, and he leads the battle with Mankey as I lead with Jupiter. Mankey starts the battle off by going for a Karate Shot, bringing me down to 8 HP as I go for a Thunder Wave paralyzing him. With Mankey paralyzed, I switch into Vulcan who doesn't get hit on the switch in. On my first turn with Vulcan, I set up a workup as Mankey hits me with a Karate Chop, bringing me down to 29. On the next turn, I set up a second workup with Vulcan as Mankey sets up a Focus Energy. On the third turn with Vulcan, I set up a third workup as Mankey hits me with a critical hit Karate Chop, bringing me down to 7 HP. I know I can't go for any more workups, so I decide to go for a Fire Fang, finishing off Mankey with a one shot as next out is Makahita. Makahita starts out by going for a Fake Out that brings me down to 4 HP and flinches me. Thankfully, on the following turn, I'm able to outspeed and go for a single Fire Fang, finishing off Makahita. This all leads into Hala's final Pokemon, Crabrawler, which, might I add, is one of the ugliest Pokemon in this game. I'm happy to say that Crabrawler gets one-shotted by a Fire Fang, and with that, I win my first Grand Trial. Now that I finish that up, I get my Ride Pager for Tauros, then I stampede through the city to get myself to Akala Island. Once I get to Akala, the first thing I have to do is go challenge the second trial, and while I was on my way over there, my Litten evolved into a Toracat, and I ended up fighting Gladion. Gladion's usually tough to fight at this point in the game, so I decided to do a little bit of EV training before I got into this fight, and it really did work out as I absolutely stomp him. With Gladion down, I go to Brooklet Hill and start my second trial. This trial is against Totem Wishiwashi, and I lead the battle with Jupiter and start the battle off by setting up a light screen as he hits me with a growl. On the following turn, I go for a Thundershock on Totem Wishiwashi, and it does about a third and paralyzes him. Totem Wishiwashi ends up getting fully paralyzed as in the next turn, I go for another Thundershock, and it brings him down to almost a fourth. He heals up with a Citrus Berry and gets fully paralyzed once again, allowing me to finish him off with another Thundershock, and this only leaves the SOS Pokemon. The small fish gets one-shotted by a Thundershock, and that wins me my second trial without even taking any damage. Next up is the third trial, and it definitely won't be as easy. Taking down Totem Salazzle with my current team is gonna be really difficult, so 
I decided to start another shiny hunt. For this shiny hunt, I'm going to be looking for Eevee, but because Eevee has such a low encounter rate in this grass, I'm going to be going through the SOS Pokemon. Unfortunately, going through the SOS Pokemon is an absolute chore, especially since I don't have any adrenaline warps to help me out. With that being said, after a solid week of shiny hunting, at 2.33 a.m., this happened. <gasps> that's it! That's it! Oh my god, that's it! Let's go! Bro! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's shiny! Oh my god, it's shiny Eevee! After catching Eevee, I named him Juno, then found out his nature is serious, which is just one of the neutral ones. Now I start to work on raising my Eevee's affection, and after I finish doing that, my Eevee evolves into Sylveon. With Sylveon on the team, I check my hidden power, and it's actually Rock, which is one of the many things Salazzle is weak to. Knowing this, I move on to challenge the third trial. Against Salazzle, I lead with Juno, and on the first turn, Salazzle hits me with a Torment as I go for a hidden power doing about a third. Salazzle calls down her SOS Pokemon, then on the following turn, hits me with a Toxic as I set up a Light Screen. On that same turn, Salandit hits me with a Venom Shock that brings me down to 62 HP after the Toxic damage. Now Salazzle hits me with a Venom Drench that brings down my Special Attack and my Speed, which kinda sucks as I go for a Hidden Power on Salazzle and it does again about a third. Salandit hits me with another Venom Shock and I'm left with 27 HP after the Toxic. It's at this point where I need to switch out, so I move into Vulcan who takes minimal damage in the switch in and on the following turn I go for a Lick. This Lick doesn't do a lot of damage, but it does end up paralyzing paralyzing Salazzle so that I outspeed on the next turn and I'm able to finish her off with a Fire Fang. With Salazzle down, I switch into Jupiter and go for a couple of Thundershocks and Salandit, winning me my third trial. With that trial finished, I move on through this tunnel and meet Colrus. He looks pretty weird in this game, I'm not gonna lie, kinda like Snowy Cast form, but I digress as he gives me the team for Flame Charge, which is gonna be really useful for the next trial. After going through that kinda weird trial, I end up fighting Total Lorantis, and this fight is kinda easy, Fire and Grass don't really mix too well. A couple of Fire Fangs and Flame Charges are able to take out Lorantis, and with that trial down, I'm now able to get some Adrenaline Orbs to start shiny hunting again. My first shiny hunt's gonna take place on this coast, and I'm looking for Wimpod. Wimpod's actually an overworld encounter though, and since its ability is Wimp Out, I can't actually bring it low enough to where Adrenaline Orbs even matter. So my fix to this problem was just saving right in front of it and continually soft resetting until eventually I get the shiny. Thankfully, the shiny hunt didn't actually take that long, and after only about a day and a half, I got my shiny Wimpod. I named him Neptune, then found out his nature was quirky, which is one of the neutral ones. With Neptune on the team, I begin another shiny hunt, this time right outside of the third trial site. I'm looking for a Salandit here, specifically a female Salandit, so that I can evolve her into Salazzle. Thankfully, I ended up getting really lucky, and in about 10 hours at around 2 a.m., I found myself with this. It's a shiny! It's a girl too! Let's go! Oh my god! Shiny Salazzle! Oh! This 2 a.m. luck is crazy, bro! <laughs> After catching Slanded, I name her Diana, then find out her nature is special attack up and special defense down, which means I'm going to be a major glass cannon. It's at this point in the run where I do quite a bit of EV training just so I can make sure I can beat Olivia in this next grand trial. Before I can go fight Olivia though, I've got to meet up with Lily, and as I'm meeting up with her, I see that she's impersonating me and, you know, trying to be like me, which is sweet and all, but, but really weird. After I get away from that whole situation, I find myself in Kony Kony City where I meet this Probo Pass. This Probo Pass gives me a letter, and this letter says that only 6.2% of my viewers are actually subscribed. Because my goal for this year is to make it to 100k subs, and since I'm pretty far away from that, all I can ask is if you're enjoying the content, please consider hitting that big red button, because it really does help me out. Also, if you really want to, you can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, or even just join the Discord server. All those links will be down in the description. Getting back to the video now, I'm ready to go challenge Olivia, so that's what I go do. She leads the battle with Nosepass, as I lead with Jupiter. I start this battle off by going for a mirror shot that does half, as Nosepass hits me with a rock slide. On the following turn, another mirror shot takes out Nosepass as next out comes Boldor. Against Boldor, I start out by going for a Thunder Wave and it paralyzes. Boldor gets fully paralyzed on that turn as in the next turn, Olivia heals up with a full heal as I go for a mirror shot and it brings Boldor all the way down into the red. At this point, Olivia heals with a Super Potion as I go for another Thunder Wave, paralyzing Boldor again. I don't really need to stay in with Magnemite anymore, so I decide to switch into Juno who gets hit by a Mud Slap on the switch in. This Mud Slap quite literally did 2 damage as in the next turn, I set up a Reflect as Boldor gets fully paralyzed. It's now where I start to set up a ton of workups, and after I set up four, I set up one more reflect so that I can finish off Boldor with a hidden power. Going into Olivia's final Pokemon Lycanroc, I have 44 HP and I've already set up a reflect. Armed with my previous knowledge of the game, I know that Lycanroc loves to use the Z-move right when he gets switched in, so I decide to go for a protect and thankfully I correctly predict the Z-move and I take minimal damage from it. On the next turn, Lycanroc misses a rock throw as I go for a hidden power bringing Lycanroc down into the red. On the final turn of this fight, 
Lycan Rock hits me with a rock throw, bringing me down to 23 HP as I go for a hidden power, finishing him off, winning myself my second grand trial. Now I'm off towards the Aether Paradise, and once I get to this place, I end up encountering an Ultra Beast. This Ultra Beast has got me ultra scared, so I run away from this battle immediately, then head to my next island so I can battle my rival. This battle goes about the same as the others, and after a Lolan hop loses, I'm able to start my way towards the fifth trial. As I'm heading over there, I've got to go through this library, and in this library, they make me read an entire book, but to be honest, I barely made it past the first sentence, as my Lexile is that like a fifth grader. It's it's really bad. After finishing off that whole little trial, I move past it to go fight these goons, and once they're defeated, my Magnemite evolves into a Magneton. All of that leads me up Mount Hokalani, where Neptune ends up evolving into Glycopod, and at this point, I'm ready to go challenge the fifth trial. This trial is against Totem Vikavol, and against him, I lead with Vulcan. I start this battle off by setting up a sword stance as Vikavolt sets up a charge. On the following turn, I go for a flame charge on Vikavolt, but since he's got a berry that reduces super effective damage, I only end up doing about a third. Vikavolt then hits me extremely hard with a spark, bringing me down to 39 HP and paralyzing me. Thankfully, Vikavolt's SOS Pokemon doesn't do any damage to me as he decides to go for a Thunder Wave. Even while being paralyzed, I still outspeed Vikavolt, and without this super effective berry, I'm able to easily one-shot him with another flame charge, and that pretty much wins me this battle. I end up finishing off the SOS Pokemon with a single flame charge, and that leads me on to go fight Guzma. To be honest, Guzma is just a big old crybaby, and after I defeat him in a battle, he really proves this by absolutely screaming at me. After narrowly escaping his baby rage, my Torcat evolves into an Incineroar as I start to make my way towards the sixth trial. As I'm heading over there, I meet these preschoolers, and after completely annihilating them, I end up evolving my Salanda into Salazzle. With that, I move on to go fight Totem Mimikyu. For this fight, I lead with Jupiter, and Mimikyu starts out by going for a Mimic against me, but since I didn't even go yet, it doesn't even matter, as I go for a Flash Cannon against her, and it breaks her disguise. Mimikyu then calls down Haunter for help, as on the next turn, she hits me with a Shadow Claw, not doing too much damage, as I go for a Flash Cannon, bringing her down to about a third remaining. On that same turn, Haunter ended up missing a Hypnosis, and that allows me to finish off Mimikyu on the next with another Flash Cannon. All that's left is Haunter, so I switch into Juno and go for a single Shadow Ball, finishing him off, as that wins me the trial. With that finished up, I come to find out that the preschoolers from earlier got their Pokemon stolen by none other than Guzma. Knowing this, I go to his not-so-secret lair and congratulate him on an epic victory. Now that we're the best of friends, I move on to go fight the grand trial of this island with Nanu. He leads the battle with Sableye, as I lead with Juno. Sableye starts the battle off by hitting me with a fake out, flinching me in the process, as in the next turn, I go for a Moonblast, absolutely annihilating Sableye, finishing her off with a one-shot and leading me into Krokorok. Against Krokorok, I switch out into Neptune, who tanks minimal damage by an Earthquake on the switch in, and on the following turn, I'm able to go for a first impression, finishing him off with a one-shot. This all leads me into Nanu's final Pokemon Persian, and for this, I switch out back into Juno. Juno tanks both a Fake Out and a Power Jam before eventually getting off a Moonblast, finishing off Persian with a one-shot. With that, I win the third Grand Trial, allowing me to move on to the Aether Paradise yet again. While I'm here, I've got to go through fight after fight until eventually I make it all the way to Lusamine. I ended up finding her in her little chamber of death where she's got a bunch of Pokemon frozen in blocks of ice, which is really strange, but either way, I end up battling her. This fight with her really isn't too difficult, I just slowly dwindle down her team until she's finished off. Once I defeat her, she jumps in this portal with my boy Guzma, which honestly sucks for me, but either way, now I'm ready to go to Pony Island. This island has got a lot waiting for me, specifically a really tough grand trial that I'm gonna have to go through. Because I know this is gonna be one of the hardest trials of the run, I decide to start my final shiny hunt. For this shiny hunt, I go all the way back to Route 5, where I start to look for a shiny Grubbin. This was easily my luckiest shiny yet, as in only a couple of hours, I ended up finding the shiny. I gave Grubbin the nickname Mars, then found out his nature is special attack up and attack down, which is honestly probably the best he could have had. Now I go back to Pony Island, where I evolve Grubbin into Charger Bug. After that, I go to Great Pony Canyon and use a couple of rare candies to evolve Magneton into Magnezone and Charger Bug into Vikavolt. This all leads me to challenging Hapu in my final grand trial. Hapu leads the battle with Dugtrio as I lead with Diana. I start the battle off by going for a flamethrower, and it ends up annihilating Dugtrio, getting a one-shot. This leads Hapu into bringing out her ace Pokemon Mudstale, and since Mudstale has a Z-move that I don't want to get hit by, I switch into Mars, who is able to just avoid it with Levitate. On the next turn, I'm able to go for an Energy Ball on Mudstale, and it does a ton of damage, bringing him down into the red as he hits me with a double kick, doing essentially nothing. With Mudstale being so low, Hapu heals as another Energy Ball is just able to take him out. This leads Hapu into sending out Gastrodon, who is four times weak to Energy Ball, so I go for that, and it ends up one-shotting as last is Flygon. Against Flygon, I simply just switch into Juno, and go for a single Moonblast, finishing off Flygon with a one-shot, as that wins me my final Grand Trial. With that finished up, I'm now able to do the final regular trial of this run against Totem Komo. This was by far the easiest Totem of the run, as I ended up just one-shotting, and after finishing off the Pokemon whose name I can't pronounce, 
pronounce, I got to watch this really cool cutscene and see my boy Guzma again. This all leads me into fighting Lucimeen for the second time, but this fight goes just as easily as it did last time, if not easier. She just kept spamming Pain Split. With all of that finished up, I'm now actually able to go fight the Elite Four. Both Gladion and Hop try to stop me, but I storm through both of them, get my team up to the level cap, and start my first Elite Four battle with Hala. Hala leads the battle with Hariyama as I lead with Juno. Hariyama starts out by going for a fake out, bringing me down to 145 as in the following turn I set up a Calm Mind as he hits me with a close combat. Because that close combat did a really good amount of damage to me, I decided to go for a Draining Kiss in the next turn rather than setting up another Calm Mind just so I could survive a critical hit if I needed to. The Draining Kiss nearly takes Hariyama out and it allows me to bring my HP back up to full. With my HP so high, I'm able to easily survive a close combat and after I do that, I set up a Calm Mind on the next turn as Hala heals. With my special attack at plus 2, another Draining Kiss is able to take out Hariyama as next out comes Crabominable. This Pokemon really could be one of the ugliest in the entire Pokemon universe, so I'm happy to say that I end up one-shotting with a Moonblast as that leads into Poliwrath. Poliwrath also gets one-shotted by Moonblast and when Primeape comes in, he experiences much of the same. Beware's out last, but because I'm at plus 2 special attack, this really isn't much of a problem and I'm able to go for a single Moonblast, finishing him off as that wins me my first Elite Four battle. For my next fight, I decide to go against Kahili and she leads the battle with Skarmory as I lead with Vulcan. Against Skarmory, I start out by setting up 6 consecutive bulk ups and I know maybe a little bit overkill but honestly it was really worth it as I was taking little to no damage on every turn. After setting up my 6-1, I'm able to go for a flame charge on Skarmory bringing him down to 1 HP due to sturdy. Kahili then heals as 2 more flame charges are able to do the trick as next up comes Mandibuzz. Against Mandibuzz, I start out by going for a brick break and shockingly enough she actually doesn't get one shotted and it ends up bringing her down to about a third. Mandibuzz then decides to go for one of the most useless moves she has against me, Punishment, and it only does 9 damage as in the following turn I'm able to finish her off with another brick break. Both two Cannon and Oricorio come out next and are both one-shotted by Darkest Lariat as finally is Crobat. Crobat is the only reason why I still have Flame Charge on my team as now I'm able to actually outspeed him with all the speed boosts I got from the move. With that, I'm able to go for yet another Darkest Lariat, finishing off Crobat and winning myself my second Elite Four battle. Next up, I decide to fight Acerola and she leads the battle with Sableye as I lead with Neptune. Sableye starts out by hitting me with a fake out, flinching me in the process as in the following turn I get hit by a Confuse Ray and thankfully I'm able to get through it and hit a leech life. This does about two thirds as in the following turn Sableye hits me with a shadow claw not doing too much damage as I'm able to go for another leech life finishing her off. With Sableye down Delmize comes in so I decide to switch into Vulcan. Vulcan is able to tank an energy ball on the switch in and on the next turn I go for a darkest lariat on Delmize and it does about two thirds. On that same turn Delmize hits me with a slam but since it doesn't do too much damage I feel safe to go for a flame charge and it ends up finishing off Delmize. Palisand now gets sent out and I kind of just make a really weird play. I switch into Jupiter to go down to 1 HP, and then I switch into Neptune, which would have tanked the earth power anyways. I don't really know why I did this, but you know, it is what it is. Regardless, I have to switch out of Neptune almost immediately after I switched in, as Palisand's ability water compaction makes it really hard to hurt her. Either way, I'm simply able to just move into Mars and go for a single energy ball, finishing up Palisand as next out is Frostlass. Against Frostlass, I immediately switch out into Diana, who avoids a blizzard in the switch in, and on the following turn, I go for a flamethrower, finishing up Frostlass with a one shot. This leads into Acerola's final Pokemon Driftbloom, and Driftbloom just easily goes down to Juno with a couple of Shadow Balls, and that wins me my third Elite Four battle. Finally, I go to challenge Olivia in my last Elite Four battle. She leads the battle with Relicanth as I lead with Juno. Relicanth starts off by hitting me with a yawn as I start out by going for a Calm Mind. For some reason, Relicanth decides to go for a yawn once again as I'm able to finish him off with a single Moon Blast. This leads into Olivia's ace Pokemon Lycanroc and because I'm really worried his Z-move's gonna come out, I decide to switch into Jupiter who was able to tank a critical hit Stone Edge on the switch in. After tanking that Stone Edge, I go for a Flash Cannon on Lycanroc and it does a ton of damage, bringing him down into the red as he goes for a crunch. With Lycanroc being so low, Olivia heals as I'm able to take him out with just two more flash cannons. Now, Olivia brings out Probopass, and when Probopass gets sent in, I immediately switch out into Neptune. Neptune easily absorbs an earth power on the switch in, and on the following turn, I go for a liquidation on Probopass, doing about two thirds. On that same turn, Probopass goes for a thunder wave that I end up avoiding. This act easily allows me to get off a liquidation on the next turn, finishing off the big nose, leading me into Carbank. Carbank starts off by setting up a reflect, but to be honest, it didn't really matter as I got a critical hit liquidation and it ended up killing her with a one shot. Now all that's left is Golem and against her I start out by going for a liquidation doing about a third as she hits me with a thunder punch bringing me down to 62 HP and forcefully switching me out. This switch ended up being really nice for me though as I decided to move into Mars and go for a single energy ball finishing up Golem and winning myself my final Elite Four battle. At this point with the rest of the game behind us I move on to fight champion Kikui in my final battle of this run.
He's going to lead the battle with Lycanroc. Um, Lycanroc's a really strong Pokemon, and if it sets up Stealth Rocks, then it's going to hurt my whole team. I lead with Jupiter. I'm going to try to set up a, or hit a Flash Cannon. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to one-shot. I just got to hope he doesn't set up Stealth Rock. He does, unfortunately. Um, it's whatever, though. Uh, honestly, I'm just going to go for a... Um, I'm gonna go for a discharge and Snorlax. See how much damage this will do. Maybe paralyze. It got. It does paralyze. Damn. I. I. Oh. See, the sucky part is that I didn't think high horsepower would do that much. Regardless, this Stealth Rocks is gonna kill me. So I'm just gonna stay in, go for another discharge, and call it a day with Jupiter. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Vulcan's in, so I can go for a. I'm gonna go for a Brick Break. See how much damage that does. Uh, bring Snorlax into the red. And that honestly sucks. Because now the full restore is going to come in. Okay, I'm not going. I'm not trying to bring him into the red again. So I'm going to go for a flame charge, raise my speed a little bit. Oh, hopefully I did enough to kill him on the next turn. A critical hit, bro, dude. That's so bad. Oh, what am I going to do here? Um, should I go? Uh, maybe. It, you know what I'll do? I'll go for a leech life. See how much damage that does. Ah, uh, does about a third, but that's not enough to kill, and I get paralyzed. My body slam's gonna switch me out. Yikes, dude. Yikes. You know what? I'm gonna bring Juno in, and I'm just gonna... I'm gonna spam Calm Mind. Hopefully I can set up two before I get, you know... Bro, this paralysis is crazy, dude! I can only set up one. I'm not gonna tank another one with that paralysis. This this Shadow Ball's not gonna do anything. Maybe a fourth? Oh, no, I actually did a good bit. Wow, dude! This is crazy! This is crazy how my team's getting countered like this. Crazy. Honestly, I'm not even doing that bad. Because a flamethrower is going to take out Magnus on here. And I reckon what's going to come next is might be my undoing, but we'll see. Yeah, Primarina is going to be quite difficult to take out. I'll go for a Sludge Wave. Should do a lot. It won't kill, but it'll do like a decent bit. Oh, it, it does kill a critical hit. Let's go, Diana. Let's go, Diana. Let's go, man. That's that's oh, that's oh good. I can go for a flamethrower against Braviary. Oh, it does almost half. Diane is going to go down here, but honestly, she did more than enough, because now I can get a free switch into Mars. Mars is going to take a lot of damage from the Stealth Rocks, but it doesn't matter, really, because I can go for a Thunderbolt on Braviary. It should finish him off. Yeah, I mean, should finish him off. It was a bit overkill, honestly. Now all that's left is the Ninetales. Ninetales is, uh, got that Blizzard, and if she hits that, it's going to hurt really badly. So I'm going to go for a Thunderbolt, see what this does. Oh, that hurts. Brings me down to 32. I actually didn't even do enough to where I feel comfortable. I mean, I have to go for another Thunderbolt, but I just gotta hope I don't get hit by another Blizzard. And I do. Yikes, dude. That means all that's left is Neptune. And with Neptune, I don't have enough. Oh gosh, the stones dig in too. And I have to outspeed, so I'm gonna go for a first impression. Yeah, I just gotta hope this kills. <laughs> nothing, nothing more I can do about it. Here we go. Yes! Not very effective, and I still kill! Yes! Gosh, that was way too close, dude. That was way too close. Diana and Neptune carried in that fight. They carried a hardcore. I didn't play that as good as I could have. I know that much. I think I, I probably could have played it a little bit better. The fact that Diana got that crit on Pre-Marina is quite literally the only reason I won that fight. The only reason. Really happy I got that off. And look at the team, too. I mean, the team of white shinies. That, I mean, looks great. It really does. But yeah, I mean, that's it. Um, thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing. It really does help me out. And with that being said, that was my attempt at a Pokemon Sun Hardcore Nuzlocke using only white shinies.